Hi folks, welcome to the channel and thanks for joining me. So today we're going to take a look at this super cool and pretty rare personal cassette player all the way from around 1981 and that is the Sanyo M4430. Now it sits in between a couple of other models which you can see there, the M3330 and the M4440. I've already featured the 3330 on the channel so do check that one out with the service and belt change on that one. And I'll be checking out the M4440 in an upcoming video, so do please stand by for that one. But today I'm going to take a look at the one in between, which is the 4430. So lots of numbers, lots of confusion, and these models do come up on eBay in various places now and again. They're getting increasingly collectible, especially in a half decent condition. So it'd be quite nice just to take a look at the general kind of specification and differences between them now. None of the ones in front of me have been sort of restored or repaired at this stage. These ones are quite tired and in need of some work. So I thought let's have a look at the, uh, the one in the middle today. So let's take a close look at it now. So originally these would all come with headphones and instruction book, carry strap, all that kind of stuff. But they've got a nice little case. They're all beautiful sort of form fitted vinyl cases. You can see that uh, two of them are basically the same, but then the later one has got a different logo on it. But we'll take a closer look at those now anyway. So we'll start with the 3330, which is, I say basic, it's actually a really not a basic one at all. It's It's got some lovely features on it, but it's the base model as it were. Now, this particular one here you see has the stop and eject there. You've got an operation light, which powers up that little LED there. You've got fast forward, rewind, and you've also got the cue and review as well, which is also again, you know, more of a, a throwback, as it were, to the, the tape players of their time when that was more of a standard issue. And these were made at a time when cassette players really were just becoming portable. So these became more like smaller cassette players rather than personal stereos per se. So they've got some throwbacks to some of those original cassette features there. This one also has obviously a volume control, a single headphone outlet. And a balance there left and right via that potentiometer and you've also got a mute switch there which attenuates the volume so the idea being that if you're talking to someone you've got your headphones on with your music playing you can just press that and it's a momentary switch so it's not a latched one so you can press that down and it'll attenuate the volume by quite an amount it doesn't quite stop it entirely it's not really a mute per se but it's near as as near as you'll get to a mute switch just by holding that down so you can talk to people Okay, so that's pretty much all we've got on that one. It's a six volt negative pole or negative pin DC jack in there. And as I say, there's your carry strap that goes around those loops there. So that's the that's the triple three zero. And again, this this one's got the elliptical, the elliptical kind of uh, control surfaces there, transport buttons. So bear that in mind when we move up to the next one which is the one we're actually going to be focusing on today. And this is your 4430. So quite similar in many respects, actually. There we go. I'll just bring that one into the back of the view so you can see. But you can see the cassette door has got different graphics now. And the whole thing is starting to look a bit more, let's say refined, but functional. You've got stop there, play, fast forward and rewind. But you'll notice you've got the square transport buttons now. You've also got a pitch control, so that's quite handy if uh, if there are any issues with the, the speed. Now, in the instruction book, it says that the pitch control is basically to factor in for battery voltages and things like that. So if your batteries are slightly on their way out and starting to play a bit slowly, you can, you can actually increase the pitch. That's what they say. Now, remember the original one had a mute switch on the top so you could attenuate the volume to talk to people. Well, on this one, you've actually got a torque slide switch, which activates an inbuilt microphone just there. So that actually allows people to uh, to speak in and they, you can hear the ambient noise or the outside noise via that. And that comes through your headphones. And apparently that's the way to go if you want to talk to someone. OK, uh, balance again and volume. So again, quite similar just there. And as we move around. We've now gone from a molded detail in the bottom to a sticker and you can see slight details there also in the uh, in the casing then we move around there the hinge is still the same by and large 
very similar and indeed the back is very similar also so you can see basically what they've done here is they've just gone to a square a square design on the transport controls and done away with the mute button and replaced that with a microphone and talk slide switch so that's those two then we move on to the triple four zero and that basically is an upgrade to the middle one as you'd expect it's got the pitch control on there looks exactly the same to all intents and purposes to be honest and all of the moldings really are the same the controls the functions everything else is identical pretty much in every way and then the only difference that you will see on the front casing is the inclusion of a counter in the top there and the moldings are the same you can see they've just put that little counter into the top so there you go so that essentially is a potted history for anyone that's confused about the the original m series sanyo products okay so we've got the triple three zero on the end with the elliptical controls then we've got the four uh, the four four three zero with the pitch control microphone and square controls then we've basically got the triple four zero which is the same except for the fact that it's also got the counter on the front well there we go so anyway as i say we've already done one of these for the channel and i shall shortly be doing one of these for the channel so that leaves us with the four four three zero let's do it and to that end we'll bring out the town of destiny and see if we can go ahead and get this thing repaired and so like much of the M series here, we've got a few screws on the back. One inside the battery compartment. And then a tiny screw on the bottom. So we change the head bit for this. There we go, and you can see there's not much to that at all. It's a tiny little screw. And that's it. So once those four are away, much like the uh, triple three zero, it's just then a case of peeling the uh, casing and housing away. So the back case slides out like so. There's nothing on there at all. Of course, no radio on this. All we've got is the battery ribbon attached to the back. Other than that, just one piece. And that brings us to the inside. So what I will do actually is just remove the pin, which slides in there for the strap. So we don't lose that. And remove the shield screw. along with the tab just there and three tiny machine screws one by the motor one amidships as it were and one at this end up here and then one just over there i think the first thing we'll do is start desoldering some cables here we've got the motor wires so we've got the black and the red just there we've also got the orange and the red from the side of the board and we've also in addition to that got the red and the blue that come up from behind the battery contacts there so i think the first thing we'll do is get a few of these away and then we'll see how much more we need to remove in a moment i've got to be honest though i'd like a bit more movement there and i don't know if you can tell but it's really pulling now on the leaf switch contacts which come through this hole here so I think what we'll do is actually desolder those as well. And you may find it useful to take photographs at this point 
just to help you remember where the cables came from. I am right in your way, I'm afraid, at the moment, but... Okay. Okay, so to recap then, we've got the black and the red from here. We've got the red and blue. We've then got the orange and red. We've got the black one from the top. We've also taken the blue and white cables from the leaf switch off of there. And you can see now, as I do this, that I can actually, there we go, open that right out and we can now see what's what. And you should see the chips, I think it's a 3160. Yeah, 3160 preamp chip there. And then the 4140 power amp. And you've got one for each channel. So you can see you've got you've got a separate left and right power amp for your speakers, uh, your headphones there. So yeah, lovely. We will give these switches and stuff a clean as well. We'll just put a little bit of alcohol in there. Just give everything a little bit of a clean in due course. But for first up, I wanted to actually look at these belts. And this looks like a very similar setup, in fact, to the 3330. So I'm just going to remove the idler carriage here. And this is under spring tension, so we have to be a bit careful. And we've got the, there we go. Okay, so that gives us decent access to the belts now. So you can probably see the, the wobble now in that belt. It's obviously seen better days. And, but the good news is, the good news, very much so, is that whilst it is definitely deformed now, you can see why it was not in its best shape, literally as well as metaphorically. So, um, yeah, we'll renew that. Feeling a bit dry, but you could see it generally, uh, generally wasn't up to up to the job. There's a little teardrop in that, little teardrop shape where it's been sat around the motor spindle. So, yeah, there we go. We'll put a new one on and... Um, I'm just glad because at least it hasn't degenerated into sort of goo and horrible mess. So that's always a bonus. Right, let's get the other one off now. And so we'll slip this second belt off. There we go. <laughs> yeah, look at that. And you can see that's quite dry. It's obviously elliptical. It's seen better days as well. It's been stood for an awful long time, this stereo. So that's good. We'll, we can uh, replace that. What I did do was I just pulled the flywheel up marginally. So we must remember when we refit this to press it all the way down and secure the little washer that will be retaining it from the other side. But for now, that's okay. Good. Now you could, you could if you wanted to, now go and clean the pulleys with some alcohol and stuff. But to be honest, these are these are sparkly clean and uh, not a problem. So I'm happy with that. Also, I think I will, just for a bit of fun, put a tiny little drop of oil just down into the motor pulley there. And I'll wipe up any excess. Obviously, we don't want oil getting anywhere where it shouldn't be. So we'll just make sure that there isn't any surplus oil anywhere. And uh, also get some isopropyl alcohol and just clean the inside of that pulley as well, just to make sure there's no remnants on there. I said I wasn't gonna run the uh, alcohol through that pulley. I'm here now. As you can see, nothing came off really, so it wouldn't have needed doing, but sometimes it's just nice to, to say you've done it. And also the same, just gonna get rid of any potential oil residue from this one. Last thing we wanna do is put new, new belts on and have them slip. Yeah, that's fine. 
also a little bit of alcohol on the rollers yeah nothing's coming off of this it's in it's in good condition in that respect so really just a belt change and in terms of the belts i use deck tech in the uk i found them to be absolutely superb great communication excellent product quality very fast delivery and all of that they're not sponsoring this video or anything but these are the guys i use for all my my eight track and my stereo repairs and stuff like that now this particular kit at the moment is a three-part kit because there's a counter if you remember on the m triple four zero and other than that it's the same kit so they will shortly be offering a kit specifically for this model but for now as you can probably see there we go that's the replacement belts that we need so they are actually actually the same as the triple four zero and indeed the triple three zero you just don't need the counter belt that's all so here we go then so first thing to do is we'll slip this we'll slip this first belt underneath really tricky for you guys to see that i apologize for that but basically it's the opposite of uh, of how we took it off and if i just zoom in you'll be able to see now that turning the flywheel spins that beautifully it's just the right size it runs freely but with plenty of grip spot on perfect and then of course for the drive belt proper from the motor it's basically the same again so we slip that one around there and we'll just check for twists in a moment but ultimately that is that but you can see why it's worth using decent belts for stuff like this because how true they run it's just gorgeous and obviously that will be reflected in the quality of the sound reproduction it kind of goes without saying in some respects so i often said at this juncture that i use the cheap multi-pack belt sometimes if i haven't got one at all just to use it as a tape as a kind of like a tape measure as it were you know just to measure it up and see which is the right belt before i order a proper one but of course there's no point making a false economy i don't think you know when we um we fit these belts what have we just taken off like about eight or nine solder joints from that it's a lot of work to change belts and if you if you shortcut at this stage you'll just regret it later so anyways, that's that's that done. So all we need to do now is refit the keeper. I'm also actually just going to put some rubber renew just around the uh, this idler as well, just to freshen that up. I'll do that first and then we'll we'll get this assembly back on. So I've just got a bit of rubber renew now just to go around this tire. Get off any gunk that's on there and just hopefully refresh the surface of the wheel a little bit. It's in pretty good condition to be honest. It's not dried or cracked and there isn't much rubbish coming off as you can see. But it is always worth doing it whilst we're in here. So having just attached everything again, a couple of things you want to do. One is just to check for that little bit of free float just there. And I'm quite happy with that. It's a fraction of a millimeter and it's exactly where it was before. It didn't need to be adjusted before. So I'm going to leave that locked in place, but just wanted to check the controls as well, just to make sure that the, the idler is transferring across okay. So you can see that everything's moving and just to make sure that mechanism and that carriage is all where it belongs. So I'm happy with that. So I think the next thing to do is just quickly clean the uh, clean the switches and the controls just up here. 
and then I think we'll solder it back together again. And I'm literally just going to put a little bit of, uh, a couple of drops of alcohol actually in here. I found that it makes a pretty good solvent in terms of the, uh, the rubbish that you can get in these. So I think that, uh, I think that contact cleaner can be overkill, especially on potentiometers that are carbon based. Because you have to be a bit careful that you don't actually wash the carbon away. But anyway, you can see I'm just putting some alcohol in there and just working these back and forth a bit. There we go. And also, I am just going to check over the battery terminals as well. They actually look okay. But I'll give them a quick wipe just with a little bit of uh, a little bit of contact cleaner on there I think on a on a Q-tip as it were. Just to clean them up just to make sure they're going to be okay as well. Yeah, they don't look too bad. I've got every faith that they'll work. I did miss a pot, actually. Okay, good. Okay, then let's get it back together. So, just going to carefully put this back. Make sure everything kind of goes back where it wants to. And also, of course, now's the time to remember. Now's the time to remember where the actual switches and the cables go. For example, you may have noticed I've already forgotten to put the leaf switch contacts through. So I'm going to find them now. There they are, blue and white. Good. Right, okay, next job. Basically now, I'm just gonna have to tuck this in and just get it to go back inside. Back inside the casing, locate over the pegs, lining up with the screw holes, which it is. That one will go over there. We've got the red one that needs to sneak out there. There's a red and blue that comes over the top and the two motor ones, which are here, plus your two for your leaf spring over there. So what does that make all together? Oh, let's just tuck, just tuck that head one back in and put a little bit of, a little bit of tape. There we go. That's it. Okay, so that's at least back where that was from. Good stuff. So yeah, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cables to solder back on again. And uh, then we'll be in business. So here it is then, the Sanyo M4430, 
over 40 years old now but still looking absolutely gorgeous what a beast it's a heck of a sized machine feels the part it's definitely rugged and robust this particular one just needed a couple of new belts so we've sorted that out not the easiest thing to do i think there's about nine things to desolder to sort that out but we've got there um also reflowed the headphone and volume jacks and clean the switches and stuff like that as well so yeah all in all what a beautiful bit of kit so i've got a plane through my trusty little jsx 37s which obviously won't do her justice at all but you know let's press play anyway and have a little listen and you'll see the cue and review working beautifully so there she is and that's running off the batteries now Q and review is nice and strong it's pulling like a train with those new belts on there absolutely superb mechanism so there you go thanks very much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for updates we've got loads of old personal stereos boom boxes but in the meantime stay safe and thanks very much for watching all the best for now bye bye